So we'll start with the discussion of the pop quiz. This pop quiz is related to the topic moment and momentum. The first one, uh, the photograph shows a ladder that a person can use to climb into the roof space of a building. Uh, it's shown here. A ceiling, a side view there, opening up the roof space, board, ladder, floor. When not in use, the ladder is stored in the roof space, as you can see here. Uh, like the ladder is stored in the roof space, this part. And open to the roof space is covered by a board. So there's a board which is covering. The board is um, hinged to a ceiling at a, one end. So you can see like it is hinged to the ceiling at one end. Means that this will represent a point of rotation around this point it can rotate. And the ladder, the ladder is attached to a board by a rail. So there's as shown a small block of a, a prevent the board from sliding. Uh, board from rotating into the rooftop. So that it will not go inside. This this block is preventing it. The first question, what is meant by center of a gravity? Center of gravity or center of mass? You have to learn the standard definition of the center of gravity. Center of gravity or center of mass is a point where weight of an object act or whole weight of an object act. So... It is a point where the weight of an object act. That is called center of gravity. In part B, the weight of a board and a rail is 50 newtons. The weight act at a distance of 0.45, as you can see in the figure from the hinge, the total length of a ladder is 2.7 meters with a 0.85 meter to the le left of the hinge. The weight of the ladder is 54 newtons. Assume that the ladder is uniform. So why the board and the ladder remain in the position shown? And it's a five mark. So means you have to show calculation as well. So by calculation, like uh, when something is in equilibrium, like the board and the ladder is in equilibrium, so you will mention uh, there will be no resultant force and there is no resultant moment. But how you can show, how you can represent or show that there is no resultant uh, force or no resultant moment. So when the weight of the ladder, which is 54 Newton and the length of a ladder is 2.7. So the weight will act at the center. So half of 2.7. As the 2.7 is a total length, will be divided by 2, 1.35 will be there. So it means the weight will act, which is 54 newtons. And if this is 0.85, and from here till this point, it is 1.35, because it's a uniform. So 1.35 minus 0 0.85, that will be 0 0.5. So this distance will be how much? This will be 0 0.5. Now, about this hinge, the weight of the ladder will cause a clockwise rotation and this will cause an anti-clockwise rotation. So what is the clockwise rotation here? 54 times 0 0.5. And what is the anti-clockwise rotation? 50 times the distance from the pivot, 0 So 50 times 0.45. And there's also another block is there. <clears throat> because these two moments are not equal. Like 54, when 54 is multiplied by... Uh, 0.5, this will give us 27 Newton meter. Then <clears throat> when 50 is multiplied by 22 point, uh, 50 is multiplied by 0.45, this will give us 22.5 Newton meter. So means 
there must be another moment like there must be another because as they mentioned why the board and the ladder remain in the position shown so why it remain in the position shown why it is uh, not rotating clockwise or anti clockwise here so first thing if it is remain in this position we'll mention the clockwise and anti clockwise moment must be equal when we calculate the moment due to a weight of a ladder which is 27 and when we calculate the moment because of the weight of the board that is 22.7 So the clockwise and anti clock <clears throat> the clockwise and anti clockwise moment right now they are not <clears throat> equal. So there must be another force from this block as this block is there. So this block is also applying a force because this side moment is less. So this block is also applying a force, and as a result of the force from this block, it will create a because like twenty seven newton meter is total clockwise. And here 22.5. So how much is left? So what moment is caused by because of this block? So 27 minus 22.5. So this will cause a 4.5 Newton meter. So there must be a turning effect due to the block, the force from the block in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will remain balanced. Is it uh, clear this question? So distribution of the marks. Uh, first thing when you will mention when it is in equilibrium, the clockwise and anti-clockwise moment should be equal. Then one mark is for calculating clockwise, one mark is for calculating the anti-clockwise, and one mark is for comparing the moment uh, as the clockwise appear to be greater than the anti-clockwise. So you will mention that there must be a moment or a turning effect caused by this uh, support or a block in anti-clockwise direction so that it will remain in equilibrium. Is it uh, clear, this one? Okay. A downward force is required to rotate the board from the block. This is force is applied 0.8 uh, meter from the hinge. Determine the magnitude of the force. How I found 4.5 Newton meter. Look, when we can, the weight is acting downward, the weight was 54 Newton. How much turning effect is caused by this? Uh, as, as this distance was 0 0.5, so this was causing a 27 Newton meter. This uh, force and distance, this was causing a 22.5 Newton meter. Because in the question they mentioned why the board and the ladder remain in this position shown. Like why it will not rotate. So means the clockwise and anti-clockwise moment must be equal. So the but when we calculate the clockwise moment is 27 and anti-clockwise moment is 22.5. But there's also another force from the block here. You can see the support block. This block is also applying a force and that is causing a remaining moment to balance. So remaining how much? Like if this is 27, this is 22.5. So remaining will be 4.5 Newton meters to balance it. Because 4.5 plus 22.5, the total anti-clockwise will be 27 Newton meter. And then the total clockwise will also be 27 Newton meters. That's how we worked out. The next is downward force is required to rotate the board away from the block. So we need a downward force. Uh, we have to, and uh, this force is applied at a 0.8 meter from the hinge. So a force is applied 0.8 meters from the hinge. We have to determine the magnitude of the force. Look means now when we apply a force to open this, so what will happen? It will rotate. Now, this block will not cause any turning effect. 
when it is in contact the block is applying a downward force and that was causing a turning effect 50 newton is causing a anti clockwise and weight is causing a clockwise and they are all balanced but now in the question we are applying a force another force is there which is 0.8 meter from the hinge so example we applied a force from 0.8 meter um a force f is there we don't know how much force but when we apply this force 0.8 meter from the hinge so it will lose the contact like this block will not be in contact as a new position will be so this will be the new position so so example our r force is f which is acting at a point 8 meter this 50 is there already there which was causing a clock anti clockwise rotation this is also causing an anti clockwise and this is causing a clockwise rotation so minimum uh, the force which we need to rotate this so again we'll use the concept of a clockwise and anti clockwise moments must be equal even though the anti clockwise moment should be greater because it is causing an effect but to calculate the minimum force which we need to open, uh, to calculate the maximum force which we need to open. So again, we use the clockwise and anti-clockwise turning effects are equal. So this force F multiplied by distance from the pivot 0 0.8 plus this force 50 distance from the pivot is 0.45 equals to this force. Uh, the weight was there 54 and the distance from the pivot was 0 0.5. When we simplify F into 0 0.8, uh, it's the same like this was 22.5, this was 27, we it will move other side. So F into 0 0.8 is equals to 4.5. If we need F, it will be F will be equals to 4.5 divided by 0 0.8. So 4.5 divided by 0 0.8, we get 5.63 and the unit will be Newton. So that's a force which we need to open this. Why this time we did not consider the moment due to this block? Because the moment we apply the force, it will lose the contact. When it loses the contact, so there's no force from the block to stop. That's why. Is it uh, clear, the second part? The next question, which is related to momentum, a, team, a teacher demonstrate the principle of conservation of linear momentum by using the two gliders, A and B, and air track. A has the same mass as B. A and B are initially stationary, then A is pushed gently towards B. State the principle of linear momentum. What is a, a linear momentum? Momentum, uh, the sum of momentum or the total momentum before collision will be equal to total momentum after collision and one mark for mentioning isolated system or a closed system which is not affected by external forces so in ice or you can start with an isolated system the total momentum before in isolated system the total momentum before if you say momentum before is equal to momentum after, this will be considered as wrong. You have to say the total momentum before collision or explosion or uh, impact is equal to momentum. After. A magnet was attached to each glider. The glider collided and stuck together. The data logger and a sensor were used to record the velocity of A. The velocity recorded after the collision was half the velocity recorded before the collision. Deduce whether these results shows. Yeah, mentioning isolated system or mentioning uh, that external, uh, no external force that is having a mark. Deduce whether the result shows a 
conservation of the momentum. So how we can apply, because according to conservation of momentum, the total momentum before must be equal to total momentum after. So how you can identify this? Because the first block example, they have the, they mentioned they have the identical map. What is the conservation of momentum? M1, U1 plus M2, U2. is equals to M1, V1 plus M2, V2. <clears throat> and what they mentioned, they stick together. So they will have the same speed. But the speed also, the velocity recorded after the collision is half. So how the momentum, like this, this mass is M, say velocity is V. Plus this mass is also M, the velocity is zero. This mass is M, the velocity is V by two because it become half. This mass is M and the velocity become V by two. So when we take M, this will be MV and uh, MV by two plus MV by two, that will also become MV. So it means it will obey the conservation of linear momentum because like first this was, this mass is M, it was moving with velocity v. The second block was stationary, so it was not moving. When they hit each other, they both move with the same speed, but that is half of the original one. As they stuck together, stick together, and they move half of the original speed, so this will become v by 2. So it means that it is obeying the, the sum of the momentum before is equal to sum of momentum after. It means it is obeying the conservation of linear momentum. You can write this answer by the using your equation, or you can also use the idea that the total moment, the momentum before is MV and uh, the momentum after is also, when, because when the velocity become half, the momentum of A and B also become half. So when we add them, it will be equals to the total momentum before. So even you use the equation and you mention that's also fine. Explain why the force of attraction between the two magnets did not affect the demonstration. So what might be a reason, even though we mentioned the magnets are there, they might attract or repel. So what might be a reason? Because this is, as we mentioned, we considered isolated system when we apply this. So why the force of interaction of the magnet or attraction of the magnet is not affecting in the demonstration. So we, these, these the magnetic force will be external force. That is a, how we apply the conservation of momentum that when external, there is no external force. So what we did uh, here, the, even two magnets are there, maybe like poles or unlike poles. But one will apply backward, another will apply, like they will apply equal and opposite forces. But why this force is not affecting? Because this force will be negligible and we ignore the external forces because it is negligible here. So the points, when you mention this, you will mention that when the magnet apply a force, like they will apply equal force in opposite direction and the force of the magnets is negligible. So we ignore the external forces when we apply the conservation. And overall, they, because this <clears throat> resultant force on the system also it is zero, you can apply. They can be aligned in this way, they can be aligned in other way. They, that does not make difference. Like it can be north-south, north-south, or it can be south-north, and not south opposite poles. Even if they are opposite poles, but what is the resultant force? If this is 10 Newton, this is also 10 Newton. So total force on the system is zero. So, so total force on the system is zero. That's why the magnet will not affect.
And you have to mention that because whenever we apply the conservation of momentum, linear momentum, we ignore the external forces. How we ignore the external forces by considering they are negligible or very small. Which of the following is an SI unit of the momentum? The unit of the momentum is the product of mass and velocity. So mass is kilogram and velocity is meter per second. So kilogram meter per second. So this was a pop quiz uh, related to momentum, moment and momentum.